view has changed. And I uh, take time to tell Kathy what a good job she's done because she's feeling a little uh, unsure about how she's being received. So take time to tell her how much we appreciate her here. I can remember, I can remember one time when, uh, when we first started the church and sometimes uh, Ronnie couldn't be here. We had, a, we had recorded music trying to sing to it. That was that was pretty tough. So we've got a live person giving from their heart, giving from their hope, and practicing through the week, all without compensation. So let's tell her, give her some some encouragement. Her husband Eddie is, is involved in this too, so thank him for allowing her to dedicate the time to this too, because it takes away from the family, I'm sure. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to have uh, Tracy, if you'd like to light the candles. I didn't say any proof. <laughs> stand for the invocation and remain standing for the first name. Dear Father God, we give thanks for this time here today. May we be able to feel that presence of truth and hope within us. May this allow us to feel peace and harmony with our lives. May we feel that connection to the infinite and eternal here in this moment. As we breathe this in and feel this, we give thanks for your loving and caring touch. Amen. 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 We have to raise these things at some point. It says it's off, but it doesn't sound like it's off. Saying off, but it sounds on to me. <laughs> the next portion is the uh, in the reading by the pastor. I kind of struggled with talking about this today, but I have to be honest and speak what comes to me, no matter how I appear when I speak about what I speak about. Something that came to me over the past week was, is it okay not to tell the truth to somebody under certain circumstances? Some people would call it lying. Some people would call it dodging the issue. Is it spiritual, is it within our spiritual discipline if asked a question or needing to respond, responding in a fashion that is not truthful. And I ran into this where I had an occasion to respond either truthful or untruthful in a, to someone. And if I responded truthful, in all likelihood it would have driven them down a path towards anger, frustration, and pure, almost pure insanity. So balanced with that, I chose not to reveal the truthful response in that situation. And then something really odd happened two or three days later. I asked somebody a question. I was pretty sure they weren't telling me the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but it made me feel okay. I, had, I gave them the benefit of the doubt. I said, I don't think they're telling me the truth. But what they're telling me makes me okay with the situation as it's happening. So I got a little piece out of something I thought wasn't true that was being told back to me. So these, these are the questions that you have to ponder in your life. I know that it says the truth is always the best thing while that that's not exactly shared by M. Hartage Britton with 
one of her ten laws of right. The fourth law says, express truth in every word, thought, and deed, remembering always to keep harsh or hurtful truths to yourself when they would carelessly hurt the feelings of another. So here we have a spiritual principle that in some fashion, the way I interpret it, ties into what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So if you're not going to share a hurtful truth with someone, what are you going to tell them? The other side of that coin is what will you tell them if you're in a running conversation with them? So by its very innuendo, it opens the door to not being exactly truthful. Now, I'm not encouraging people to live a life of lies. I'm not encouraging people to lie out of convenience when they don't want to deal with something. But there are going to be occasions, in my opinion, like Emma Hardage Britton says, to keep harsh or hurtful truths to yourself when they would needlessly harm another individual. <clears throat> you are responsible for what you say. Spiritualists say personal responsibility is a cornerstone of their faith. You are responsible for what you say, even if it's the truth. You are responsible for what you say and the result of what you say in some fashion. Maybe not 100% responsible for what the other person does, but if you start a ball rolling down a hill, you're the one that started it. So you have to bear a certain amount of responsibility for it. So I was on both sides of that coin, feeling the need to not be truthful with someone and realizing that it was going to be the best thing at the moment. Not for me. It wasn't me avoiding something. It was me not setting somebody off on a tangent that was going to be self-destructive to them. I was going to suffer no repercussions by telling them the truth. But the reaction that they would have had, I know for a fact, would have set them off like a guided missile towards something. And at the same time, I turned around and had something told to me that I was pretty sure wasn't true, but it made my heart relax and be at ease with what I had asked about. So these are the intricacies that we get into when dealing with things. It's not absolutes, and again, I'm not advocating living a life of lies, telling people lies out of convenience, but I am saying that at some times, as according to I'm a Hardage Britain, that there are times when you may not want to reveal the exact truth of something that's going on. And these are just spiritual guidelines. They're not absolutes. They're things that help us learn more about ourselves. And I thank you for listening. The next portion of our service is the healing portion. Have Judy and Marty take their positions behind the healing chairs. When you hear this, a healing chair has become vacant during the meditation. Ashton will be doing meditation today. Um, we'll start the service by reading the prayer for spiritual healing on the back of the hymnals in gold. I ask the great unseen healing force to remove all obstructions from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty, and I live in my heart. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help, and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and power of God. Good morning. Today it's not enough physical to me to be grounded here. Uh, let's get ready for the meditation. Find a comfortable position to sit where there is no tension on your physical body. Take a few deep breaths through your nose. Inhale and exhale. Close your eyes.
go of all the thoughts that are occupying your mind, any worries, any concerns you may have, just let it go. It's right out of your head. Bring your focus again back to your breath. body becoming more and more relaxed and your mind more and more quiet. Feel your breath taking you deeper within peaceful place within. Feels very quiet, calm and soothing. Connect to this peaceful presence. And while you breathe, yourself gently. I am at peace within and with my surroundings. I am at peace within Consciousness shifting higher, higher to your forehead. Become aware of your third eye in the center of your forehead. And as you look through your spirit eye, envision a brilliant golden light beaming into your forehead. Feel this golden light in a form of energy spreading in and around your forehead. Healing and balancing your mental body and let go of all the thoughts, the beliefs that are limiting your highest potentials. Feel this golden energy circulating, cleansing, clearing, balancing your thoughts. back of your head, circulating 
around your hemispheres, both right and left. Healing the neurons in your brain. Transmuting the data from your right brain to your left brain. Awakening the divine wisdom within your soul and spirit. Awakening your intuition. Breathe in and breathe out. Feel the energy moving gently down to the back of your head. Down to your neck. Circulating around your throat. Healing and balancing your throat chakra. Enabling you to speak divine truth. Your body that needs healing. You are experiencing any discomfort. Just throw this healing energy to that area. See that area being healed. and out and release, release and let go. Allow the energy to clear the blockages in your physical body, spiritual body, emotional body. and let go of emotions of pain and hurt. Feel the energy cleansing and balancing your emotional body. It circulates down to your lower body, down to your knees, your feet. See it going out to the bottom of your feet. Extending deep into the ground. Anchoring you to the earth. expanding outside your body. As you look with your mind's eye, see your peaceful body sitting in this beautiful circle for the night.
Exhale, breathing in and out. Feels very peaceful. state of your consciousness. You are meant to live in peace and harmony. Feel the beauty of your consciousness and the peacefulness of your mind. Regardless of where you are, what you do, embrace this stillness. vibrations growing and extending. Embracing Mother Earth. Feel, feel these peaceful vibrations spreading. Thank you. 
Kalban, where you're sitting, settle these peaceful vibrations throughout your physical body and let it settle down and be grounded here in this physical plane. Let there be peace on earth. Let it begin with us. Let there be peace on earth. Let it begin with us. Put this thought in your mind. Stetson, who's been the primary healer of this church almost since it was formed, here most every Sunday, except when she goes on vacations like she just got back from. And her vacation took her to see John of God, and she spent two weeks there, was it? Eight days. Eight, Eight days. days. So she's going to share that as well as some of her healing experience. She also organizes drumming on the beach that some of you attend and she's also taken over the uh, talking stick circle in Casadega which happens the first Saturday of each month which is also a nice uh, ceremony. So please welcome Reverend Judy Stetz. excited to be here. Um, it's always so special to come home and to come home with a wonderful surprise package and to be able to share it with the ones that you truly love and spend time with. So um, when I first kind of started coming to the church, I didn't know who John of God was. I'd never heard of that. I didn't even really think about that there were master healers alive today in the world. I mean, we're kind of busy and locked up in our own things. And, and then, you know, a couple of different folks, Susan had mentioned it and Rosa had mentioned it. And even when they had mentioned it, I never really felt anything. I never really thought about it. But what this trip was truly about, it was faith. It was wanting to build a stronger relationship for myself with God, being open to whatever, whatever He wants of me, listening to being called, and then taking action. That's each of you. Taking the time, the energy, and yes, that finances in order to go through with what you're being called to do. So when I first kind of thought about it, and it's like, okay, no, I was supposed to go to Brazil. And I actually had an exchange student who was graduating college from Brazil, and I promised her I would go to her graduation. And I said, I need to go to this other part of the trip. But there isn't a tour. And they say, oh, you really need to go with a tour. And you know, I don't speak Portuguese, folks. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and they don't speak a whole lot of English, I can tell you. <laughs> but it was like, no, I was supposed to go. I was supposed to go alone. This was me. This was my trip. I didn't have to speak Portuguese. I had to listen to God. He would give me every single thing I needed if I listened, not just with my ears, with my heart, with my soul, with what is being truly asked of me, and paying attention. Paying attention to all the wonderful little you know, people and gifts and tricks that are all out there in the earth each and every day. He works so hard to go ahead and to set this up for each of us. And how many times we rush by and we don't notice that bird that was just there chirping to let us know that, you know, you better watch out for it. Or how it's over here. There was a child that was playing and laughing. Did you even notice? No. You're so busy, caught up in our own lives that sometimes we just rush and run by. 
So I took this time out of my life and I was very excited to get there because when I first left Salvador, it was very, very dangerous in Salvador. The police had gone on strike and um, that's very, very dangerous. There's three million people there. Everybody was waiting and panicked for, um, for riots to happen. Literally, one of the parties that we went to, um, we had to keep canceling what we were doing. We couldn't go out to dinner. It was too late. It was too dangerous. The, the restaurants closed. The banks were closed. The businesses were closed. People were like, don't go there. Don't do this. So when we went to the last party, which started at 11 o'clock, because in Brazil they do different things, um, we literally had an armed guard in the vehicle with us to go there. As we were driving there, it said police in a truck that pulled over in front of us and four guys jumped out with their bulletproof vests and machine guns. And we drove around them to go to the party. So um, when I left there, I was extremely nervous and ready to leave Salvador and ready to go to Abajin. <laughs> but I had always had this anticipation of, oh, I'm going to go from a Brazilian airport to a Brazilian airport and I don't speak any Portuguese and how am I going to get there? What if my ride's not there? You know, all these things. <clears throat> But I just prayed about it and I said, no, God gave me this trip. He gave me this journey. He will get me there safely. And he did. Everything was absolutely perfect the way it was supposed to be. When I got there and finally got all the way back to where I was staying at this wonderful little casa, um, it was delightful because it actually was behind a big gate with locks and I was feeling pretty good about that. <laughs> after I just came from. <laughs> and I intentionally went and got it right across the street from the casa. And so, um, you know, where John of God was. And, and that's kind of like a complex. So you've got the, you know, you've got a little store that's over here that sells a lot of crystals and you got a little food over here and you've got really nice gardens over here and they've got crystal bed section. And then the, in another area, they have like all the connected buildings. So you have the great hall, which is what you walk into to begin with. And then the second room that you would go into is what's called a current. And people would go in there, probably a hundred of them, would go in each day, well, each day that he was there, Wednesday through Friday. And um, they would line up and they would get into that space early. And when they're sitting in that space, it's kind of an L-shaped space, they actually just sit and pray. And what they do is they raise the vibration. That's why everybody wears white, is to raise the vibration and to be able to send the most love and light that they can to everyone who comes through. And people come themselves, or else oftentimes they will actually bring pictures. And just they all come with intentions of what it is that they want to have changed, done, improved, upgraded. What do you want in your life? What do you hold the most importance to? And then at the end of the L shape is kind of where John and God will sit, and there's huge crystals. This is one that I had to bring home with me because it calls me. Huge crystals. I mean, huge crystals. And so the energy is enormous in this space. And then there's another room that's a third room off of that where everybody filters in and they will sit down and they'll say little prayers, and then they filter back out again. So that's kind of the way it's set up. So. The first day when I got there in the evening time, I knew I wanted to go up there and I wanted to just sit down and I just kind of rest. I arrived. <laughs> okay, So I get there and the sun is setting. And I'm looking out in this incredible vista over, you know, they had this huge, um, I don't know, outside porch area, I guess is the best way I'm going to put it right at this moment. And the sun is setting. And as the sun was setting and I was watching the clouds pass over, I took that time to truly pray and say, as this sun sets, so shall all of my worries, all of my concerns, everything that gets in the way from me being completely and totally here for you and for me and whatever our life will be. And that's what we did. So then the next morning I got there and I knew I had to get my ticket, my first time ticket, and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And I don't even know what I'm eating most of the time, folks, because I couldn't read it, but I just ate it. <laughs> But I got this great little cheese bread, which was wonderful, and um, waited and waited, and there's all these people, and they're all milling about, and I don't know how to speak any of the language, but it didn't matter. I was just going to wait. So then when it came to the first time, I had gotten my piece of paper that went ahead, and it said, you know, what my three intentions were. And my first intention was for self-development. I knew I wanted to go. I knew I needed to go. I knew I was called to go in order to help my healing. It had to go to another level, so I needed to make that commitment to help make that happen. The second thing I prayed for was my husband. 
his health. He actually has a lot of different health issues, and I really wanted to put him there in the forefront. And then for myself, because I felt that our self-healing is something we don't necessarily take the time for. I know I don't exercise enough, and I eat more than I should, and, and all. <laughs> but you really need to keep your body functioning the way it is. So my first trip through, um, you know, it was as soon as I stepped over the threshold, I have a little piece of paper with my three things in it, I stepped over the threshold going into that current where all those people were, and you were almost blocked. You could feel the love and the power and the passion. It was so tangible. I immediately began to weep. I was so humbled to be in such a warm and loving space. And I remember Susan and Rosa telling me, now pay attention to what he says, pay attention to what he says. I would have no clue what that man had said. <laughs> I couldn't think, I couldn't f anything. I was just enveloped with all of this this love pouring through me and so as I went up and I took the corner and went down and right in front of him and I was two people away and he looked up and he caught my eyes and he had brown eyes that just locked with mine and as soon as he did I heard him say my child I called you and you came and that's what it was about God called me and I came I didn't have and listen and understand. He said something and put my paper in the basket. I've got no clue. I walked out of there just in a fog and went to the third room and then I went outside and followed all these people. They're all speaking Portuguese and I've got no clue. Finally, about 10 minutes later, somebody came along and they said, anybody here speaking English? Oh, that would be me. <laughs> they brought me back over and um, he's like, well, did he tell you to go to surgery? I'm like, I, I don't know. No, I don't know. And he's like, well, you back next week and and I knew it was very special because this was Good Friday and I knew it was Good Friday this was such a powerful time there were four planetary alignments that were set up at this time there was a solar eclipse there was a lunar eclipse there was a full moon there was everything that was supposed to be I knew this was such a transformational time so I went back to my my little place, which was just fantastic. And little birds out there, and I laid my hammock, and I was so exhausted. I was just so exhausted. And I'm like, I don't know if I can even get up and go out there. But I knew I needed to go back, and I knew I wanted to go back. And so then I, I went back in the afternoon, and I got myself a ticket. It was crazy. It was busy in the little store. I picked it up at number two. Everybody was picking them up because you couldn't get them. There were just so many people in this space. You're talking hundreds of people, hundreds of people in a very small space, and everybody really wanting to be a part of what this is. And they're coming with wheelchairs and walkers and canes and carrying babies and and just and the roadways were all bumpy and they were all dirt and it didn't matter. They all came because they all needed to come. So as um, now see, I'm just all of a sudden I got weaved off. <laughs> <laughs> that does happen, I can assure you. <laughs> so when I came back in the afternoon, um, I sat in the front. I said, I'm going to get up there, I'm going to be ready. And I wasn't going to go in because they're calling everybody for surgery, and I didn't think I was supposed to. But then I looked at my ticket, and it said 2A. And 2A was what it was supposed to be if it was a surgery. And I said, well, I might not have understood, but God did. So I went in. And now it was really interesting because he actually was out in the front at that time doing physical surgeries on people because he did. And that's what he was called to do. There are 37 different entities. So these are different spirits who step into this man. This man actually removes himself from his body or sets it aside and these other spiritual entities step into him with massive healing abilities that happen through him. So I literally walked by him and then I went into the back in the prayer for room and went back out. And I was like, well, didn't really notice a lot. I thought that was kind of interesting. And then I got my prescription and I went and got it filled. And, and I didn't know I was coming back that day to have the surgery. So I made an arrangement to have, you know, a, a crystal bed healing. So after I'm out and they're talking about, well, you got to go back to your room for 24 hours. I'm like, well, i got a crystal bed healing. And I'm like, when? Oh, 15 minutes. Okay, go ahead. You can go over. Um, and, and there's a lot of things that you need to do. It's like, you know, you don't, um, 
you, you have to drink their water for that whole time. There are some different herbs that everybody is given, and they're all, they all look the same on the bottle, but they're not the same. Each one is very specifically created, each for one of us. And wherever we are at that point in time, I actually received three different bottles, but each one was different. So anyway, I went to the crystal bed, and well, lo and behold, the electricity was out, wasn't working, and so the other people all left, but then it turned on just in time for me, which it did. I went and I laid down. Didn't feel a whole lot that time, and I said, well, you know, not sure what's going on. I went back to my little space, and I slept for nearly 40 hours. It was amazing. This was such a healing cleansing. So that was Friday night through Good Friday. Saturday evenings, I'm laying there in my hammock, and I could hear, I thought it was a football game. I could hear these drums and, and singing. It wasn't. It was an Aborigine tribe. And they were holding service, or council, or a gathering, or whatever. And I was so blessed to be at the top of this bluff to be able to hear it and to participate. Easter Day came around, and I was very fortunate that a gentleman who was in the uh, Casa area would come by and check on me, and I needed water, and I couldn't go anywhere because I still could hardly walk. And he went and brought it back, and let me tell you, I cleansed, I don't even know how many colors. I don't want to know how many colors. <laughs> but I was clean at the end. <laughs> So um, that was that was my first journey through, and then I had a couple of days to kind of adjust. It was like on that Tuesday, I knew they were doing an, an English-speaking orientation, so I was very excited. I might learn something that I hadn't quite figured out. And um, I get there, and I really was sure it was at seven o'clock, but God's like, "No, I'll get there about five and watch the sunset." Well, it started at five. You know, <laughs> it's God's time. It's not my time. It's what exactly it's supposed to be. So um, I found out I was doing good enough, you know, I, I was doing well enough. So then it was the next morning I got there, and uh, I really wanted to go and sit in the current because being a healer, I understand that, you know, that, that power and energy is just a wonderful thing, and I wanted to be a part of it, and I knew you needed to ask permission. So I went to the interpreter, and he says, no, you don't have to ask. You can just go get in line. It didn't feel right. It just didn't feel right. So I sat inside, and I said, no, I'm going to let him tell me what needs to happen. So as I began to walk through, there was an interpreter there, and he says, you need to go to surgery. I'm thinking, surgery? I just had surgery on Friday, and now you're going to have me go through again in the afternoon on Wednesday? So anyway, um, I left there, kind of befuddled, and um, I was very fortunate that we were in line to get soups, because they actually serve soups there, and um, there were two English-speaking uh, tour guides, and I told him, I said, well, they told me to go back and have surgery again. He's like, that's highly unusual. But, you know, he says, well, the, first, the second one overrides your first one um, for time-wise, because the thing is, you know, you have an eight-day period of time, and um, you're not supposed to be in the sunlight, you're not supposed to use a lot of energy, and there's just several different things that happen during that time period. Um, and then at the end of it, then you actually close out with, like, having a, a glass of water by your bedside, because the entities will come to your home, and they will remove your stitches. So you need to let them know where you are at that point in time so that that will be done. So um, anyway, I went ahead through that whole process and kind of had an idea of what to expect, you know. So I headed back on Wednesday afternoon, and I'm, I'm leaving. And I'm just about to cross the street, and I hear this ruckus up in the tree above me. And I look up, and there's a dove. And he's, he's pulling so hard on this branch. And it breaks off, and it's in its beak. And it looked. You could see it. It was biblical. It was the dove holding the olive branch. And I knew at that moment, I took its picture and flew directly over my head, not even three feet, that it was going to be a magical, a truly magical experience that was going to happen. So I went and I sat in the front again. So when they called in the surgery, I was the first one in. I can tell you on that one. <laughs> but while I sat there, you sit for about an hour. And I continue to pray, and it doesn't matter what people are saying. It all becomes white noise and chatter. It's all about listening. So as I sat there and prayed, I started to feel the palms of my hands, and they got prickly. And then I could actually feel that God had inserted large crystals in the palms of each hand. And I'm trying to comprehend what this is. 
and I'm feeling it as I'm going through on my first trip. We sit in the room as the prayerful time. Because it was the first group, we sat about 10 minutes, which was lovely. Mm -hmm. So as I'm sitting there, all of, and they're praying, I feel a, a heavy pressure on the top of the crown of my head, huge, the, the whole crown of my head. And then all of a sudden, I jerk upright as I feel this massive crystal tube being inserted through the center of my body. It then, I could feel it grow the forefront of my arm, across the top, and both clavicles connecting back to it. I then finished with actually feeling it going down the back of my legs to ground me. As I'm sitting there, and again begin to weep because I don't even understand what is happening, I couldn't possibly fathom what type of gift I was being given at that time. God very, very clearly said, the, the type of energy, the high vibration of energy that will be coming through your body couldn't sustain itself in its body. I had to gift you with this new infrastructure, with these crystal channels to be able to handle the power. It will change. It will greatly change. But it's going to take a little time. December is when it will come into effect. Well, I went back to my class at that time. And I was not tired at all, I can assure you. I was so hyped up because of this increased energy. For two days, I couldn't open the palms of my hands all the way. I did take pictures where you could actually see the light around the edges. Um, but as I was showing people, I don't know, it kind of looked a little funky. And then my eyes changed color, too. My eyes turned a crystal color while I was there. It was such a cleansing time all the way through. As I walked around, everything happened exactly the way it was supposed to. I had to get this crystal. It has an angel in the top. The bottom of it is the tree of life. I had been looking. Susan had gone before, and she came back with this fantastic crystal, and I really wanted one just like that. <laughs> she had no reason to give it to me. I was supposed to get my own. And so then it was my last day. And I ended up going into this little place, and it actually was just barely finished by the artist. And it's a healing crystal. It's exactly what it was supposed to be. Everything that happened, I don't know, apparently I'm making noise, <laughs> was exactly the way it was supposed to be. The entire trip was exactly the way it was supposed to be. So Friday morning, I knew I thought I really wanted to go again to try to sit in the current. It was such a powerful space. And God's like, no, not now, my child. He's like, you'll come back another time for that. Now you have to take the energy that you have in your body and you just have to let it sink in and absorb. Don't mix your energy with anybody else's. Don't let anything else wave. You can go ahead and start healing again in eight days, but don't have anything done to your body to change that energy for 40 days. So it was the last morning, and I went through to visit him once again, and I had a crystal in my pocket, and I really wanted him to bless it. And as soon as I got up close to him, when he had blue eyes, because the man generally does have blue eyes, but the first healer that I spoke with had brown eyes. Again, different entities that are coming in. He touched the crystal in my hands, and the waves, the waves of love and emotion, and it was such a beautiful time because that morning it was very, very busy. And so it was a really slow line to get through the current. So as I went through, I just sponged it all up. And that love comes home with you, and it's with you wherever you are. But what it all really comes down to is each of you. Are you willing to listen? Are you willing to take action? Are you willing to even increase your own faith? What is it do you want out of your life? And that's what God wants for you because he loves you exactly the way you are. So I've got a book up here. I've got some pictures and a crystal, and I'll be happy to answer questions if you have any. But thank you for sharing the joy that I had of my trip to Brazil.